Good morning, guys. It's your Scouse dyslexic colorblind sign right here again. Uh, today I'm going to do go through the different typefaces. Three, maybe tops. Use for poster boards, posters, and chalkboards. Or the three or four I use mainly, anyway. Um, if you bear with me. I'm going to move the camera. As I say, I've not got a photographer with us. So I'm going to move the camera. See, just to show you the typefaces we're going to do. Okay, you've got an upright scrump there, and coming across here, you've got just the basic gill sands at the top, spring furs, an italic scrump, stores prize, an upright scrump again, and just a lowercase. Okay. Bit of a wobble there on the camera. As I say, I've not got a photographer working with me, so just trying to do it on my own. Uh, right, okay. Gil Sands, just a plain block letter. Uh, Gil Sands, which you will need for headings and whatnot. So, I'm going to use a really heavy pencil because I don't think you can see the marking out so let's stick to once again as I say this is only for demonstration purposes so um, I've just ticked the, the height of my letter and I'm ticking there only because my more stick won't reach that far just to give me a guide Okay, <clears throat> if you want, you can draw your letters up to start with, entirely up to yourselves. So, if it's just going to be the word sale, just if you wanted to, sketch your S in. Now, all I do when I was seven at the time I started. The width of your S is the width of your A. Your A is a, l a little bit wider. Not a great. I'm not going to go into all the mechanics um, of text because it's too technical. There's too much to go into. Um, there are lots of books available um, on the mechanics of lettering. I'll find some and recommend them for you. Um, the way the letters are built up, they're all, they all stem from the Trojan um, column. Um, so, but if you wanted to, that gives you a rough guide to the, the width of your letter. You've got to stay within those parameters. So there's your A. The width of your A. Your L is always a little bit shorter. There's your L. And once again, just tick in your E. Just to give you a rough guide, uh, I suggest you just give yourself a rough guide. Don't draw the letters perfectly. just to give yourself a tick in. Um, your letter L here, the 
The reason we reduce the size of the stroke here on the letter L is because it creates a big hole here. The balloon starts to lose its balance. It starts becoming abject from the letter E. It looks like it's letter E is disappearing on its own somewhere. So you're talking about balance there. To reduce, if that is the length of your letter E, and your letter L should be shorter, should be here. Okay, Gil Sands, just a block capital letter. Um, actually, one of the most difficult letters to do, believe it or not. Because everyone can see if it's leaning a little bit that way, leaning a little bit this way, if it's not quite square, if your lines aren't quite straight. So it's actually quite a difficult letter to do. So that's one that I would, even of a night, I'd sit there with a, a pad and a pencil and just sketch it. The more you see lettering, the more it gets into the brain and it'll transmit to your hand. As I say, I'm not going to go through all the different typefaces. There are thousands of them. Um, and as I say, there's plenty of books out there for reference. You know, people say to me, what typefaces do you do, Mel? I do every typeface. If someone says to me, Mel, that's what I want, then that's all I sign right. Uh, do it the same way, just a quick sketch in. Right. So we've got the word sale. You've got a rough sketch. Um, then we've got, I'll do a top and bottom line. Um, this is an italic scrump. So A, B, C, D, E, F, G. So we've got blue poster paper today. Just for a change from the blaze red. Uh, G H I J K L M N. Okay, I'm going to do this, and then uh, an upright scrum. So, if you wanted to take a screenshot of it, or you want to pause it to have a look at it, or keep it for reference, you can do. Because I'm not sure whether the, I think there is a scrum typeface in the lettering books of lettering. You'll find um, one stroke brush for this. I'm not going to do the word sale. It's just the gill sounds. Uh, to start with, you might be wise, even if it's only a small gill sounds like that. Um, you might be wise starting with a smaller brush. Uh, this is a number five, series one three one zero, sable from Rights of Limp. You might be wise starting a smaller brush and then you can just outline the text like so and while it's good to <coughs> it's good to outline the text to start with i do that in one stroke but as you're outlining the text your mind is actually drawing it up and it's it, it's becoming registered the shape of the letter in your head um,
and you, you know, it, it's it's a lot of information. Uh, you're out. Just off. If I took this out to the correct space, the width of each letter, some places will say they'll draw a grid section and they'll say a letter takes up three boxes. Then there's a box space, then another letter takes up another three boxes of space, and another letter takes up another three boxes. You've probably seen the grid section. Um, whereas a W is the size of a letter and a half, uh, as you know. Um, you'll see you'll see all that in the book reference. But if I took this to the same as the E, which is here, that L's gonna finish there. Same rough space. Then you've got the letter E. Look at this bloody big hole here. It, it do, it's not balanced. It's, 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 it's miles. It's, it, it, you, don't, you don't want this. You don't want that. So hence we reduce the letter L to about here. Um, but for gill sands, yeah, I'd recommend outline the smaller brush to start with. And the more outlining you do, and only rough, only roughly, Okay, your one stroke um, scrum, which is, is used all the time, posters, uh, chalkboards, um, same again. I go down, across, and then pull down, lift the brush off like so, and twist it. As I say, I give my A's a kick. kicked off, gives that angle. Just finish at the bottom. Um, actually I'm not I'm not gonna go through all this because you guys can actually find books with typefaces in to copy. I presume you're more interested in the technical side of it. So uh, same again put your brush down you're coming down this time, you do a stroke like this, you're coming down, pull down, pull up slightly, twist and lift off, down, up, twist and lift off. Um, uppercase, This lettering, scrum, you can use, it can be quite thin, it can look quite nice, quite fat, heavy, so you're leaving very little space in, in so if we did a letter, let's say, a letter B upright, if you wanted a really heavy letter, um, don't need it, it, it's multi-purpose so if I use the small brush
so that it, so it's quite it's quite varied same typeface so if you had a line of text if that was going to say let's say tuesday and then there's a lot to go on this line at nine o'clock at the hall you use a slightly smaller height obviously and use a thinner brush but you can use the same text um, also i'd recommend a brush script as i say i'm going to find a book with these references in and give you where you can buy it where you can purchase it from with these typefaces in um, a brush script um, if you can I'll find a, a simple brush script Just one stroke again. That's just a one stroke brush script. You can change it very easily by making it a bottom heavy brush script. So what we do, let's just give the script more weight at the bottom. which can look quite nice. A script you can vary to your own, your own character really, because there's no, no one's gonna turn around and say, well that ball's not the same as that. It's not a classical script. It's just a brush script, a hand script. Um, so you can vary, you can actually sort of design your own script to suit yourself as you go along. So for practice purposes, personally, I'd be tempted to use a smaller brush. Smaller brush, this is the, the number five. And literally, um, just strokes. Get you used to the feel of the brush, how it works. And just as importantly, how your paint travels, what consistency you like your paint to be at. You know, that's only something you can get used to. Um, and this is just getting used to using the mole stick all the time, your finger trap there. Um, the cross stroke, the same, finger trap there. This is, this will get used to using the brush let her rose and also as I showed you before the let her rose like that The more of this you do, the better. Straight strokes. As I say, this is more to get used to using the brush, even using the brush on its edge, like that, to give you a thin stroke. Um, so it might be that.
practice, practice, practice. Um, I used to find a certain time it actually becomes it can be quite monotonous and quite boring. So I would do say an hour of that after I finish work, just literally the lettering. The way I serve the time when you serve time the sign writer, I would be stood there like that all day. And my dad would be there and he'd be sign writing the board. And he'd be, I'd be holding his paint for him. So you're watching how he's doing it, what he's doing, how he's forming the letters, how he's holding the brush. All that comes in, what type of paint he what consistency his paint is. And then as he went, as we went along, he would leave the cross stroke on the A or the cross stroke on the top of the E. And he'd walk off and I'd have to fill them in. And then as time went by, he'd leave a letter out and I'd fill it in, I'd put it in and you slowly build up. That's how I basically serve my time. Um, so work, luckily being serving time with dad, was one on one, so you're there all day. Very Victorian chap, there was no room for error. Um, so you're one on one all day. My bedroom's a studio at home, so I went home, I was practicing nearly every night as well. Social life was garbage, but there you go. Um, you make a mistake on a poster. You can't wipe it off. And spelling mistakes, trust me, we will make them. Plenty of them. I've made loads. Um, what we tend to do, piece of scrap poster paper. Call what we call a, cut what we call a window. A little bit of water-based glue on the back and just put it over the letter, stick it over the letter. Let it dry, and then, so it might be that size, and change it. And that, that's the way it's called putting a window in. Um, the spelling mistakes you will make. I mean, I've done, oh, can't go into too many. I used to do a company, a uh, football team, you might know, you lads might know, Tramier Rovers. Uh, years ago, there was a a lot, of, a lot of unemployment, so the government brought out a, uh, a youth training scheme. Companies could take on apprentices and the government would pay for them. I was doing all the signs of Tramier Rovers, all hand done, um, 24 foot long by three foot high, did them all on site. I used to go to the ground and do them. Um, I was there most days for a long time before we had all the vinyl letters and the electric signs and whatnot. Um, and this youth training for jobs, it was uh, just a big, bold, black letter, I'd say about two foot high, youth training for jobs. Black line top, black line bottom. I knew I was there the next day, so for a bit of a many jape, I'd always try and cause a bit of chaos. I changed one letter and put youth training for yobs instead of a J, but yobs. Not realizing that Tommy Rovers that evening had a health and safety video made by the fire brigade. They all met up to watch it in the uh, boardroom. Some smart ass spotted it and said, Wait up. You got Scouse Mel doing the sign writing. You training for jobs. Well, it went down well. It caused a bit of a giggle, but the boss weren't too happy the next day. Um, but yeah, also a tip as well to put a poster up outside. If someone says, "Well, we need it on a board," they got a board because a lot of places we used to do posters. We do one for Easter. It might be a church. We do one for Easter, one for Christmas, one for whatever harvest festival. Um, wallpaper paste, just let's your wallpaper paste. When you've finished, it's cut to size, paste the back of the board, the board, place your poster on it, and wallpaper paste over the top of it. Smooth it out, that's the way to fit them. Just in case you didn't know, it's always a, a, another little tip, another little hint. Um, okay guys, I'm gonna go and try and find a book with all the different typefaces in. But well, thanks for watching. And it's uh, signing out for now. Bye for now.